Obrigado a todos, boa tarde. É, meu nome é Alexis Hockenbach. É, queria agradecer a vocês por se organizarem para estar aqui com a gente hoje é, nessa nossa conversa. É, a gente tem aqui conosco uh, alguns convidados. Uh, um deles uh, é o Seth Gibson, ele é um Senior Solution Engineer da Unity. Ele vai estar tá, é, apresentando para a gente aqui um pouco sobre tudo aquilo que é possível a gente construir em conjunto é, com cada um de vocês que está aqui e com a plataforma da Unity, usando as tecnologias de real-time 3D é, para fazer inovações dentro das mais diferentes indústrias. É, a gente conhece bem a plataforma da Unity para construção de jogos, mas ela tem N outras aplicações possíveis e o SET vai estar falando um pouquinho para a gente sobre, sobre tudo que é possível a gente construir é, com a plataforma da Unity. Vamos ter aqui também, rapidamente, o André e eu fazendo uma pequena apresentação é, sobre a Compass UOL, sobre o que nós fazemos e como, como a gente pode ajudar cada uma das empresas que aceitou o nosso convite de participar aqui hoje a construir soluções de inovação e de transformação de negócios usando as plataformas de real-time 3D. Então, eu vou uh, aqui começar fazendo uma provocação. André, você pode ir passando os slides aí, por favor. É, provocando aqui um, 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 uma, uma discussão é, de o que, que os games têm ensinado para a gente. Né? A gente aqui acompanha o comportamento... É, das, dos aficionados é, com games e a gente percebeu que nesses últimos anos essas tecnologias não só é, melhoraram muito em termos de realismo é, e de capacidade de oferecer experiências imersivas, mas também a gente percebe uma, uma tendência cada vez maior no, no mundo dos games em que os games não são é, aplicativos, não são ambientes para as pessoas explorarem sozinhas. É, em grande parte dos games hoje, um, um dos grandes apelos é a capacidade de você gerar experiências interativas, não só com o game em si, mas com outras pessoas né, que estão através dessa plataforma usando esse ambiente para criar cenários de socialização. Pode passar aí, André? É, a gente acaba, é, então, se dando conta de que os, as plataformas de gaming e real-time 3D, elas são hoje é, plataformas que geram oportunidade de experiências sociais imersivas. Esse, esse é um termo que a gente tem utilizado aqui na Compass Wall para descrever um pouco do que a gente tem desenhado em conjunto com alguns clientes, é, usando essas plataformas de modo que a gente possa, talvez, com um pouco de visão de futuro aqui, antecipar aquilo que pode estar vindo pela frente à medida que tecnologias como 5G, por exemplo, se popularizarem nos próximos anos. É, o throughput das redes vai permitir que a gente possa ter aplicações muito mais sofisticadas do que as que nós temos hoje, é, produzindo realidade virtual, realidade aumentada, realidade imersiva. E a gente acha que o elemento do social no meio dessa é, construção ele é fundamental porque ele traz toda uma pegada diferente, inclusive né, para ajudar a gente a viver com esse momento tão diferente, tão difícil é, que como humanidade a gente está vivendo é, por conta das limitações de interação social, física, né, impostas pela pandemia, Talvez a tecnologia ela possa ser um meio de nos aproximar das pessoas. Pode passar aí, André. A gente, então, enxerga que essas tecnologias elas abrem um novo mundo, um, um, um mundo de novas oportunidades para a gente poder fazer coisas de forma diferente da, das que a gente fazia até então. Pode passar, André. É, eu vou falar rapidamente aqui sobre a Compasso e como a gente tem atuado nesse, nesse universo a gente pode passar, André. A gente tem a nossa missão é, é de construir experiências digitais que ajudam os nossos clientes, as, as, as companhias que trabalham com a gente a crescerem os seus negócios, né, usando essa, transforma, essa transformação digital para melhorar a forma como elas se relacionam com os seus consumidores finais, para oportunizar 
melhores experiências para os consumidores finais, para as pessoas de uma forma geral. E com isso a gente melhorar a vida das pessoas. Né? A gente olha tanto a vida dos nossos profissionais, a vida dos eh, profissionais dos nossos clientes e especialmente a vida de todas as pessoas que a gente toca com as aplicações que a gente constrói. Pode passar, André? É, nós somos hoje uma, uma empresa que atua em todo o mundo. A gente tem os nossos delivery centers concentrados no Brasil, mas nós servimos empresas de todo o mundo, onde nós é, as ajudamos a construir plataformas que é, as habilitam a fazer venda online, a fazer a transformação do seu negócio, a oferecer aplicações de autosserviço e de realidade imersiva é, para transformar a forma como elas fazem o seu negócio hoje acontecer. É, pode passar, André? Nós temos hoje uma, uma equipe que deve terminar o ano de 2021 com mais de 3 mil desenvolvedores. É, nós temos crescido de forma super expressiva nesses últimos anos é, e o nosso crescimento ele se dá em cima desse talento que explora essas tecnologias transformacionais, entre elas as tecnologias de real-time 3D. E a gente está organizado aqui na Compasso, esses 3 mil profissionais, é, em Innovation Studios, que são as nossas áreas de competência, as nossas áreas de conhecimento, aonde nós procuramos engajar, é, trocar conhecimento, é, gerar oportunidades e permitir que os nossos times possam também crescer. Dentro dos diferentes Innovation Studios que nós temos, está é, é, destacado aí na tela esse estúdio que nós criamos é, no início desse ano para trabalhar com as plataformas é, de gaming e real-time 3D, aonde nós exploramos o potencial dessas tecnologias conectadas às disciplinas que nós trabalhamos em todos os nossos outros estúdios aqui dentro da Compass Wall. Então, feita essa introdução sobre a Compass como um todo, eu queria passar aqui para o André. O André vai rapidamente falar para vocês sobre é, o estúdio, que ele é o Head do nosso estúdio de é, gaming real-time 3D. André! Obrigado, Alexis. Bom, então a gente tem visto aí nos últimos anos a indústria de games evoluir, né? É, criar cada vez mais jogos que fossem é, realistas, que trouxessem experiências cada vez melhores, mais, mais incríveis, e outras indústrias começaram a olhar para isso, poxa, a gente poderia usar essa mesma tecnologia que tem sido usada no desenvolvimento de games para uh, os nossos negócios. Então a gente tem visto, por exemplo, a BMW e a Volvo utilizar... É, essa tecnologia para treinar os seus modelos de inteligência artificial em piloto, nos pilotos automáticos dos carros dela. A gente tem visto a Nike e outras marcas utilizar-se para criar propagandas ou jogos que coloquem um cliente como protagonista uh, da experiência da marca dele, colocando ele... Uh, ele vai estar exposto àquela marca ou àquele produto de forma indireta, não como uma propaganda, mas talvez um jogo, uma experiência imersiva. E na área também de, de educação e treinamento, indústrias utilizando-se disso. Uh, então, para a gente ficou muito claro que são mais do que games, né? são novas experiências que a gente encurta distâncias e trazem as pessoas para perto desses negócios. Como que a gente faz isso? Temos programas de bolsas, uh, aqui na Compasso já... Já, já é sabido que no mundo inteiro tem um apagão na, na mão de obra de tecnologia e ainda mais de tecnologia de nicho, né, para desenvolver games. Então, o que a gente tem feito é formado pessoas nesse tipo de tecnologia. Hoje a gente tem mais de 50 pessoas é, focadas nisso aqui na Compasso, entre estagiários, uh, especialistas, desenvolvedores uh, e uma parceria muito forte com a Unity. Por isso que a gente está trazendo eles aqui hoje, porque a nossa parceria com eles vai além do técnico, além de alguma dificuldade técnica que a gente tenha, está em, em sermos evangelistas desse tipo de tecnologia, em trazer para os nossos clientes como que esse tipo de tecnologia pode ser utilizado. Né? Uh, te, temos focado em três principais áreas aqui, então a parte de Adver Games, que é basicamente quando você utiliza para promover uma marca ou produto, a partir de Ed Game, quando você tem uh, universidades ou indústrias utilizando-se disso para fazer os seus treinamentos, e o que a gente tem batizado de e-commerce, né? o Immersive Social Commerce. E aí eu vou mostrar para vocês um vídeo do que o nosso time fez aqui uh, nesses últimos tempos, aí eles se dedicaram em mostrar como poderia ser utilizado e como pode ser utilizado esse tipo de tecnologia. Eu vou rodar um vídeo aqui e posteriormente eu explico um pouquinho mais.
Então, o que, que a gente tem feito aqui? Né? Um, a gente começou a pensar o qual, qual seria o próximo e-commerce, né? porque no passado uh, algumas pessoas poderiam olhar para o e-commerce e pensar assim, nossa, é, isso é muito avançado, as pessoas querem ir para a loja, querem fazer, consumir os produtos na loja, né? e aí veio a pandemia, veio uh, toda a situação provocada pelo Covid, as pessoas uh, com distanciamento social passaram a utilizar cada vez mais de meios digitais para adquirir produtos. Uh, e hoje já é um... Todo mundo já usa o e-commerce e nós começamos a nos questionar qual seria a próxima tecnologia que as pessoas olhariam e pensariam, nossa, isso é muito avançado para para as pessoas hoje, uh, precisa, a tecnologia ainda precisa evoluir, como que a gente po poderia ser disruptivo nesse meio. Então, nós estamos propondo o e-commerce, que é uma nova maneira né, da gente criar o um ambiente virtual uh, da loja, ou, ou, do, do, do comércio, né, do, né, da empresa, onde a gente possa trazer o cliente para experimentar, não somente uh, nesse mundo virtual, uh, os produtos modelados em 3D, enfim, mas o social, na palavra, está em você uh, eliminar barreiras de, de, de distância, onde você possa uh, compartilhar essa experiência. Eu vou passar de volta aqui para o, o Alex, para trazer o Ceph, para falar um pouquinho mais para a gente como tem sido utilizado essa tecnologia. Okay, well, thank you, Andrea. Uh, I will now call our partner, uh, Unity. We have here Seth Gibson that uh, will be speaking with us today, sharing his experience, his knowledge on using Unity's platform to build innovative real-time 3D experiences. So first of all, Seth, thank you so much for being here with us. I know you are talking from Washington area, close to Seattle. So uh, we 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 hope you have a fun time talking to us here today. And thank thank you once more to, uh, to being with us here. Yeah, no worries, and thank you for having us. Um, so let's go ahead and just jump right into it. And I think let's see, my sharing tray. Okay, so hopefully we're sharing now. Hopefully everybody can see my presentation. Yes, we can. It's perfect. Yeah. Okay. Um. So, I think uh, especially after the year that uh, we've all just had, or maybe you're coming out of, I, I don't know what's going on uh, over there too much, but I know here in Washington State we're we're finally getting back to normal. But I think it's very safe to say that it's it's a challenging time. It's been a very interesting year, uh, and you know, with with that, we've seen at Unity a lot of change, a lot of disruption, shall we say. And what's really uh, driven that disruption is, you know, in no small part, the the last pillar you see there, uh, the the, uh, the pandemic that we've all been dealing with. But I, I think it's safe to say that that's really exposed and compounded kind of some of these other issues. For example, uh, the demographic space, you know, the, the virtual, the need for virtual training that we see now with our aging workforce and tribal knowledge that is being lost to a lot of these companies as people are aging out. Um, sustainability, right? You know, as, as we as we look towards the future of not just the industries, but kind of society and the planet, you know, how do we how do how do we scale and and make this all, you know, how, how do we how do we create a sustainable living condition for all of us given the changes that we know are coming down the road? And of course technology. I mean technology is is growing and developing and evolving at an almost exponential rate. You know, I, I know uh, five years ago, some of the technology that we almost take for granted now, like XR, for example, was really just uh, just the, you know, Kickstarters and sketches on on napkins and relegated to to development labs at places like uh, you know Apple and Intel and 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 uh, and, and other higher end uh, technology companies. But now they're really accessible to everybody. And so what that means is we need to adapt. You know, we can't really be stuck in these old ways of thinking. We can't really fall back to the way we used to develop, the way we used to market, the way we used to even present information and interact with our with our customers and users and just hope that, you know, they're going to pick up and run, not just because of the things that we just mentioned, but because as we see new generations coming into these into these spaces, you know, younger people who are growing up with this technology, they're going to expect more, and we really need to deliver that. So, here's a really great statistic. 
um, as to just to kind of highlight that this isn't really a, you know, this isn't this isn't uh, what's what's the word I'm thinking? This isn't um, you know this is this isn't a daydream. This isn't uh, this isn't wishful thinking. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, many many Fortune 500 CEOs are are coming to us and other technology companies now and saying, hey, this is something that we're aware of, but we don't know how to do this. We just know we need to do it and we need to do it fast. And so at Unity, what we really see as the hallmarks of real-time 3D transformation or how 3D, how real-time 3D is going to transform um, you know, product design and product development, uh, it, it falls into these categories here. So. You know, we see how things are going to be designed. Uh, this and and I love this slide because you know we've seen companies who have gone from, especially in the automotive space, from being uh, you, you know using traditional techniques like clay to replacing very very large percentages of that workflow with purely digital workflows, whether that's in Unity or Autodesk Vred, or and, and of course in VR and in collaborative experiences. Um, so with that, we also see. Uh, um, engineering and, and uh, engineering and simulation uh, work being done, and some of that actually spun off of that the automotive industry. I think it's safe to say that automotive was really the first touch point for some of this stuff. But as people are starting to to train not autonomous vehicles more, for example, um, and build smart systems, we're we're seeing that real time 3D is very much finding a home there, as it's allowing us to do things that we were limited by the constraints of the real world that. Um, we are no longer limited by. And of course, uh, the obvious one, construction, uh, you know, game engines, uh, real-time 3D technology has been for, you know, for years and years has been used to, to build and simulate um, imaginary worlds. And so what we're finding is that it's just as effective for building and simulating the real world. And of course, uh, sales and marketing. And again, speaking to uh, the the, the pandemic that we that we just uh, been or that we are maybe still dealing with, you know, a lot of the, the the traditional sales cycle has changed, especially as you can see here, as you can probably imagine in the automotive world, you know, people are of course wary of going into showrooms. So how do we take that experience from the real world into, you know, from from the showroom into the living room, as we like to say? Well, the answer is real time 3D. And of course, lastly, uh, service and usage. And this, I love this slide as well because one of the things we hear from a lot of our, our partners in automotive is that screens are the new horsepower. Um, kind of as, as I alluded to earlier, you know, as we have people who are more technology savvy and who are more used to growing up in a world where you know technology and information is everywhere, they're expecting richer displays and richer information feeds everywhere, not just on their phones, not just on their desktops, but in their cars and, and in other modes of transportation as well. Um, likewise, so uh, digital training, digital and virtual training, um, as, as we kind of mentioned, we're seeing that as the as the workforce continues to age and as people are, are aging out of some of these big companies, uh, a lot of the training knowledge is being lost. Uh, it's either in, uh, in in service manuals that aren't being updated or even worse, it's in, it's in somebody's head and when that person leaves, they take that knowledge with them. So how do we you know, how, how do we create uh, a world where we can where, where we don't lose that knowledge and even better we continue to to update it and not just the information itself but how it's presented to incoming to incoming workers and lastly uh, the, the digital twin space and uh, this is one of uh, this is a demo that one of our partners did uh, that our, our solution group actually did one of our partners in bridge and what we're able to do here is is we're able to again simulate whole um, processes that in the real world could take millions or billions of dollars and where one mistake is incredibly costly. But now we can do that for almost, I'm not going to say for free, but um, but but for, for orders of magnitude less money. And again, and so these are all the things that we're seeing the, the benefits of real time 3D in, in what we call the industrial space or the non gaming space. So uh, one more time, just to just kind of drive home that this isn't wishful thinking, and this isn't um, you know the, the, this isn't projection. Um, we, we're seeing many many companies adopting and using real time 3D at, at almost every stage in high percentage. And if you can see down at the bottom, this was a study that was done two years ago. So you can imagine that again, like you know, if this was done two years ago, these numbers are probably even higher or or haven't changed. But I I would say definitely accurately reflect the state of of real time 3D in industry. So 
what does that look like then? Well, there are different, as we mentioned, there are different uh, different ways that products are built and designed. And this, this, this kind of lays out how we see it in Unity. Um, so design, engineering and simulation, uh, production and construction, sales and marketing and service and usage, just the, you know, the, the pillars that we just discussed. Um, here's kind of some, some specific use cases, and we'll, we'll show some demos of these later just to give you an idea of how Unity is being used specifically by specific companies for these. So again, um, this is another number from that study that was done uh, two years ago. And if and, and if you can read the caption, it says 55% of industrial companies will adopt real-time 3D within two years. Well, if that was two years ago, um, imagine, kind of imagine what that number is. And we're definitely seeing that at Unity. You know, we're seeing, we're seeing, uh, I, I would say it's probably higher than this. And and that's everything from whether, you know, from, from very, very simple technological evaluations and research all the way up to companies that have been doing this for a couple of years now who have replaced major parts of their production and development with digital solutions. And we're also seeing that the amount that people are investing is going up, uh, whether that's monetary, whether that's time, whether that's skill acquisition, whether that's hiring, People, uh, again, companies are seeing that this is beneficial, this is something that they need to take seriously, and it's something that they're willing to spend money on, whether that's internally or with groups like Composso to, to develop their experiences and training. And of course, um, pretty much everybody is on board. Uh, it, it's, it's one of those, you know, where the technology is nowadays, it's very, very, it's, it's much easier nowadays to go into a, a CTO's office or a CEO's office and show them what people are doing or what's possible with the maturity of the technology and the accessibility. So it, it, it's not a, it's not an uphill battle we're fighting anymore, like, a, a, you know, just to kind of tie it all together. This is, again, something that people are seeing the benefits of, people are realizing it's something they need to do, and people are excited to do it. So who are some of these companies? Well, as uh, you can see here, um, these are these are just this is just a small kind of sampling of some of the companies in, in just two of the what we call the verticals that we work with. And the really neat thing about these companies is, you know, these aren't just folks that we've had one or two conversations with and, you know, sent off to, to play with a couple of licenses of Unity. These are companies that Unity has been able to get embedded with and have deep conversations with and really, really help them kind of structure sort of what the future of their of their process looks like, you know, what their real time 3D products and solutions look like, and we're happy, we're very happy to call them partners, not just customers, and that's really I, I would say one of the the main strengths of Unity is we're not we're not here to just kind of drop in some licenses, drop in some technology, and and disappear. We really really want to help these companies kind of evolve, grow, and develop, you know, for the long haul. So. Here's a, a great example of one of those companies. Uh, our, our good friend Timmy Giraud uh, from from Volvo, I think, which which I think was mentioned earlier. Uh, he's been a, a Unity champion from from day one. Very 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 excited about Unity. Always happy to talk to us. Always happy to to stand on stage with us and and speak to what we're doing. And we do have some some use cases with Volvo that I think we could share out later if, if anybody's interested. Uh, as well, uh, our partners uh, in defense, uh, especially uh, American Defense, Lockheed Martin, uh, another company that we work very closely with, who's all, who's also very, very uh, big Unity champions. And and again, you know, so you're saying these are big companies. I mean, Lockheed Martin is, uh, if you're not familiar with them, is one of the, I would say, one of the premier defense contractors in the United States, probably in the world. And you know, they have, and Unity has certainly found a place, uh, you know, a home with them. Uh, of course, our good friends at Toyota. Um, Toyota is another company that we've worked with for quite extensively uh, in, I would say, across the, the entire spectrum, everything from product development, design, all the way up to marketing and branding. And, you know, we still enjoy a great relationship with them today. And now we're even getting into the, the research and, uh, you know, autonomous and, and AI development with them. So another company that's, that's very, very happy to use Unity and we're happy to work with them. All right. So lastly, uh, in, the, in the AEC space, a company like Skanska, who's using Unity for everything from virtual training to, to, to prototyping in the real world. You know, so, so to be, being able to walk out to a, a site in, in anywhere in the world and throw up a virtual representation of what a building might look like and be able to see it at different stages and really, really 
kind of imagine what issues they might run up in against in the development, what they might need to change now, what they, you know, what they're going to have to consider as they go into construction, and then what they're going to have to think about over the lifetime of, of, of the uh, of, of the uh, of the site. So, hopefully by now you're starting to ask yourself, um, how how do how do I I, I take you know how, how do I become one of those one of those 55 percent or those 94 percent or 97 percent that 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 are kind of getting hit to all this uh, this real time well that's the really neat thing about unity is we we have quite a number of ways for folks to get involved and and we would like you to get involved so first of all understand that we we are we are everywhere unity is in fact the world's leading platform for creating and deploying real time 3d content whether that's games and now industrial uh, applications non gaming applications whether that's automotive media entertainment um, architecture and engineering simulation pretty much everything. And we are also the number one platform for XR experiences. So that, that includes virtual training, virtual design, collaborative design, and pretty much anything else you might want to do in XR. So here's just, just some numbers about the company. So just, just, to, just, to, know, just to let you know that we're not going anywhere. Um, you know, we have quite an active user base. Uh, we're showing great growth year over year, and uh, we're, we're showing a lot of excitement from our investors. So not just our, our now that we're a public company, and I think this this uh, this this really speaks strongly for the not just the future of Unity, but just for kind of what folks think about Unity. I mean, I think it's safe to say that people really believe in Unity, really believe in our mission and our statement, and where we're trying to take all of this. So let's get into some specifics about solutions. So. We start with the core technology, which we call the Unity Industrial Collection. The Unity Industrial Collection is what you know as the Unity. So the Unity Editor and some specific uh, technology that's designed uh, mainly for industrial use cases. Now, one of the approaches that we've taken on the industrial side is we are building products on top of Unity that are purpose built for specific applications, specific industries, and specific user bases, and we'll show some examples of these. But those include products like Unity Reflect for the architecture and engineering space, Unity Forma for marketing and product design, Unity Mars for XR and AR creation, uh, Unity Simulation for uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning based applications, and content creation applications like Art Engine and Plastic SCM, and all the way down to deployment platforms like Fear Use, which we use to stream Unity to to users on any endpoint or any device. And this is enabled by uh, our verified solution partners uh, who, are, who are companies that we have either acquired or that we work with very closely, uh, such as Pixies, Perspective, uh, Pace Lab Weaver, which we use for virtual training, and of course, Interact, who is another one of our virtual training partners. And this is just a small list of, our, of, of what we call VSPs. Um, if there's a specific solution you're looking for, chances are we have a VSP who can meet that need. So what's in the Unity Industrial Collection? Well, we start with uh, we start with the ability to bring data into Unity. So that's really really the core of Unity. You know, Unity uh, on the industrial side, as you might know, we uh, the, the data formats are much different than what we might see in games. And so that's everything from CAD data to point clouds to BIM data. Uh, so Unity Unity Industrial enables that. Once your once your develop uh, your data is in Unity, then you move to the full Unity Pro, which again is what you know as the Unity Editor and the Unity Runtime. And once you have created your application, you can deploy to any of the, I believe it's over 30 platforms we support now. Or as I mentioned, you can deploy to fear use and and uh, and take advantage of our streaming solution, which enables you to stream to mobile devices, desktop, or pretty much anywhere that you have a web browser. So diving into some of our, our specific solutions, uh, such as Reflect and Forma, we'll start with Unity Forma. And what Unity Forma is, is, is it's a, it's what we call an editor replacement for Unity. So it's built on top of Unity and it's purpose built for folks, especially in the automotive uh, space. But really, we we like to think that anybody who's doing any sort of product marketing can use Forma. What Forma lets you do is very quickly bring in your product data. And as you can see here, you can set up uh, different variants, different camera angles, and really, really build a full product experience, product configuration experience uh, with no coding skills required, which is which I think is one of the highlights of where we're going with with uh, the Unity Industrial Collection and Unity Industrial in general. Uh, as, as we like to say at Unity, we think the world is better with more creators, and so we're trying to lower that barrier of entry to Unity. And this is, like I said, this is a paradigm you will see across all of our industrial solutions. 
So Unity Reflect uh, was really the first, I, I would say the first Unity product we developed driven by the needs of the architecture and engineering space. And what it allows you to do is bring in not just your CAD, not just your building data, but also your building information management or BIM data into Unity and then create an experience based on that. So not, not just visualization, but being able to, for example, bring a building in and display it as you can see here in, a, in, in, in real space, you know, virtually, but also have access to things like uh, construction schedules. So you could actually swipe through this and see what the building is going to look like at different stages, or you could hide different layers and see you know what maybe the piping underground is going to look like or maybe just what the what the superstructure is going to look like without uh you know without the, the cladding so this is a product that's constantly evolving and again it requires very little knowledge of unity itself and is actually more targeted towards folks who are not unity experts but are experts instead in their respective aec field um, a few other products we have that we mentioned. So Unity Art Engine is more of a specific content creation engine, but uh, what it enables is that really that creation of high fidelity, you know, realistic, realistic photo real, basically photo real content with very, very, again, little artist or knowledge or intervention. You know, it's the kind of thing that um, maybe a designer would use or a technical artist would use, would use rather than say uh, a full blown 3D, 2D uh, content developer. Uh, Unity Mars, uh, as, as um, we mentioned, Unity is the number one platform for creating XR experiences. And so again, we'd like to lower that barrier. We'd like to, we'd like to make sure that everybody who wants to create an XR experience with Unity can do that and not have to, not have to get lost in the, in the vagaries of learning Unity. So they're able to, to very, very easily create the, and, just, and deploy these XR experiences. Um, without having to write code, without having to, you know, understand too many of the specifics of Unity and 3D content creation. And of course, because we do support so many platforms, you can build once and deploy to any target that, that we support, which we try and we try to stay up with all the major platforms, you know, hardware OEMs and um, and, uh, and library and, and software providers. Uh, lastly, as you mentioned, Fury Use, and you can see here a great example of what Fury Use does. You know, perhaps you have a very high fidelity experience that you want folks to be able to see uh, on different devices, so on tablets or on phones. Uh, this is what Fury Use enables. Fury Use is a render streaming solution where you simply have to build your Unity desktop application, upload it to to Fury Use's servers. Uh, send the, the the URI to your end user, and with just a, a click on on a link, they'll they will have access to the full fidelity Unity experience on any device that uh, that supports uh, effectively supports WebRTC. Uh, a couple more products: Unity Simulation. So Unity Simulation is our our touch point product for uh, for AI and ML. So now rather than having to maintain your own your own farm, your own simulation farm to run massive, massive simulations, you can simply build your simulation in Unity and hand that off to us where we will we will run the simulation for you uh, across however much much resource machine resources we need and we'll simply deliver back to you the results in whatever format you either request or whatever uh, format you um, you've developed yourself. Uh, Plastic SCM is a company that we've been working with for quite a while and I would say is the premier Unity version control system. Uh, it's much more powerful than something like Git uh, or Perforce and it's and as they've been working with Unity for, wow, I would say six or seven years, uh, they really, really understand the specifics of Unity projects and the needs of source control that's aimed at Unity. Uh, the last touch point here, um, human machine interface, as I mentioned earlier, uh, in the automotive industry, screens are the new horsepower, so we need to enable folks to build richer experiences. And what you see here is another editor replacement similar to Forma that allows folks to, to create those, whether it's a cluster, whether it's an infotainment system, uh, whether it's um, the, the actual instrument panel, very simply in Unity uh, with no code required and again, able to deploy to all of the leading targets that are used in automotive these days. So we talked about our VSPs a little bit. So specifically, uh, we have a few folks that we'd like to call out here. Um, our good friends in France, Pixies. Uh, so Pixies is our solution for, as we mentioned, bringing data into Unity. This this is how we manage all of our CAD data, all of our, whether it's, you know, 
CAD files. I think Pixie supports something like 40 different CAD files. So you can rest assured that whatever design software you use uh, more than likely will be supported by Pixies and will be able to come into Unity. Uh, additionally, Pixies is where we condition all of our data, where we can we can decimate, tessellate, basically take design data and put it into real time friendly constraints and formats. Um, Perspective is our leading digital twin solution. So what and they they are able to simulate everything from a simple conveyor all the way up to a full factory, including industrial robotics. And this is all done in Unity and in real time using uh, world accurate physics and uh, industry standard industry standard formats and and, inter and uh, interchange um, uh, processes. So for example, to control programmable logic controllers. So you can imagine a world where you have a, a conveyor in the real world that's connected to a perspective simulation in Unity, and that real world conveyor is driving a simulation in Unity. So you could have part of your you know, part of your production line in the real world, and you could see what the rest of it would look like uh, virtually before you actually continue to lay it out. And this is the kind of thing that, as you can imagine, saves folks a lot of money being able to to design and test full on um, hardware based setups like that um, before actually having to go to hardware. Um, so staged by VR on, uh, this is how this is one of our, our premier um, collaborative immersive collaborative experiences. Uh, we we'll, this is how we um, we would create say a collaborative design experience where you know we have one person in one part of the world and another person in another part of the world who, will, who need to come together and speak on a specific part of a product or process. And again, it's uh, it's real time and in VR and on the desktop. So people can can really, really get together in what in whichever format they're comfortable. Um, immersive training. I know this is something that uh, that uh, Composites called out, so we're happy to talk about this. Uh, Pace Lab uh, Weaver is our is our premier solution. Uh, this is a full and, and Pace Lab is a full um, I guess solutions partner who is who's who not just only provides the software but is able to provide custom development and they work with companies like uh, Boeing, Lockheed Martin, some of the other large groups that we've that we've spoken with or that we've mentioned who have as you can imagine have quite a, a big need for this training. But if you'd like to you know scale back and you're looking to build your own training, we have uh, our partner Interact who provides a uh, again another Unity editor replacement that lets you create full on uh, immersive training simulations uh, again with no code and we'll take we'll take a look at some uh, some Interact based products in a, in just a little bit. So so now that we've actually talked about what these solutions look like, I'm going to try and fly through the rest of these slides so we don't have too much more time so we can get some demos. But um, there's there's a couple ways we can uh, we can we can engage once it comes down to building the experience. So we're happy to provide you training and learning resources and even and, and even help you with staffing to to create your own team of Unity exports experts, or you can engage our, our solutions group, Unity Solutions. So building it yourself, you know, this is something that in games is very common. Uh, what we're seeing on the industrial side, however, is that a lot of the resources and knowledge that is present in games just doesn't exist. And compounded by the fact, uh, you know, compounding the, that difficulty with the fact that a lot of these products in the industrial space have to be built on much shorter timelines, uh, this pre this presents a lot of challenges, which is which is why we we have stood up our, our own group Unity Solutions, who used to be a Unity partner called Finger Foods uh, Studios, and they actually started out in games and then moved into AR and are now uh, probably and even before coming to Unity, were very much one of the leading providers of of industrial real time 3D solutions, and we have acquired them and now they are pretty much ready to go for whatever your needs might be. So that's the uh, the end of the I guess the. The, the PowerPoint karaoke, uh, if I can figure out how to get my control panel back and stop my share, we'll look at some cool stuff. All right, so let's start with, um, let's start with some, as because as I mentioned that automotive is kind of, was really where a lot of, I'd say the interest for uh, Unity came from. Let's see if I can. Let's see if I can do this this time. Wow. Okay. Here we go. All right. 
hopefully you guys can see that the this video. And so, so this is just a, a collection of examples that we're that we've seen from our, our partners in automotive, and it covers everything from design to uh, to virtual showrooms. Uh, you know, not built with Unity Forma, but built custom to um, to power wall displays that uh, offer all kinds of different um, product uh, product information to high res marketing content, as you see here, which is enabled by Unity's uh, now support for ray tracing and, and high definition rendering, uh, to skills training. So then this was actually built by um, by some some folks who later came to work with us at Unity. So so that's uh, that, that's what we have for automotive. Uh, let's see another good example. Sorry, uh, his teams really hates me today. Let's see. Uh, we'll talk. Uh, let me, so we let me show you some some of our interactive training examples. This is a good one. Yeah, this, is a, this was created by one of our partners again by one of our partners. Um, Light and shadows. Okay, and give that a second to spin up. All right. So this was created with uh, our solution Interact that we mentioned earlier, and as you can see, we've we've um, we've simulated a whole factory layout in VR and. Because Interact allows for both full body and specific tracking, we can we can create a fully immersive training experience where the user you know, is guided through a task or guides a piece of hardware through a task and then is able to interact and assist with that task. So you can really see how how this uh, this tech is, is is enabling. I would say low cost and very high safety training, so. I'm going to stop there because it looks like we're coming up on time, but uh, I think uh, I think we're taking some questions next. I hope, but anyway, I hope this was uh, this was informative. And again, this is just a very very small small uh, sampling of what's possible with Unity in the in the industrial space. So so thanks for having us, and I apologize for my my team's issues. No worries. No worries. Uh, uh, the presentation was great. Uh, uh, I, I think you you did. Uh, really well uh, working with teams here. So uh, thank you so much. Uh, I think Ingra has uh, a few questions from the audience, right Ingra? Yes, perfect. So thank you so much, Seth. That was very interesting and informative. So everybody will have around 10 minutes to have a quick Q&A session. So there should be a space on your screen where you can submit the questions and then I'll be reading them out loud so that one of our presenters can tackle them. So I already see that there's one here on the chat that was asked by Camila. She's asking if this type of 3D technology is already being used here in Brazil or just in foreign countries. So I, I so the, the question was is is the tech being used in Brazil? Um, I do know that we have some accounts down there. Uh, I've been on a couple calls. I like that I don't cover a lot of Latin American accounts, so I can't say who. But I, I know that uh, our technology is everywhere. And it, it's funny, Brazil from a Unity user standpoint, I, I think, and some folks at Unity can back me up on this. I, I think is actually we see the highest prevalence of just Unity editor users uh, in Latin America in places like Brazil. So. Right, I can help here, Seth. Uh, you are right. There are several companies in Brazil that have pioneered with Unity's technologies here. And I'm sure everyone here in the call of our Brazilian folks, they know a company called Rede Globo. And Rede Globo, uh, they, have, uh, they are uh, the largest uh, TV producer uh, in Brazil, they are a media company. They have several uh, uh, TV shows, and I will mention one that I'm sure everyone here in Brazil knows, which is a program a program called Fantástico, 
from Ready Global. It, it runs every Sunday evening. And there are several uh, interactions that happen on Fantastico with uh, the presenters going through immersive uh, realities during the show. And we learned from, from Unity's folks that all of that is built on Unity's platform. So they, they have been working with uh, Unity technologies for a while. Uh, I remember of a program that Fantastico presented, I think it was like two or three months ago, where one of Fantastico reporters uh, covered uh, a virtual visit to Wuhan in China, where uh, where where COVID-19 uh, was first uh, discovered. Uh, so uh, since it, the, the reporter was not able to visit physically Wuhan, they wanted to cover and to people to know the city. And they did all of that on top of Unity's platform. So uh, I, there are many other customers. I, I just mentioned Ready Global because they are one of the most known uh, media companies in Brazil. And uh, there are several other manufacturing companies that we know have been working with Unity platform as well. And right now we at Compasso are working with several online retailers to build these immersive social commerce experiences where people can uh, use the virtual reality and the immersive experience to go shopping. So uh, uh, I, I believe that, the, the, that there will be a large adoption of these technologies in the next few years that we will see uh, expanding every day. And so yes, there are a lot of Brazilian companies already using, but on the other hand, I would say that this is just the, the how do you say that? It's just the tipping point of the iceberg because there's a lot more to be done. We are just starting to explore the technology. And I don't know, Seth, uh, do you agree with me that if, that 5G technologies, once they are in place on a, on a broader usage, they will enable much more adoption? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, it's going to enable much richer content. It's going to enable uh, wider content distribution. And as, yeah, 5G is definitely going to be uh, an accelerator for all of this. Right, great. Okay, so next question. Guys, don't be shy. If you have anything that you want to ask, make sure to submit through the chat. Um, so Seth, usually when people think of virtual reality, they will think of these big virtual reality goggles that they have to use, which right now um, does not exactly democratize the experience. So I see um, the advancement of um, phones, um, mobile phones, where you can have these experiences through this type of uh, through this type of tool, through this type of technology, and access virtual reality solutions. Um, that's a good question. I, I, I think, you know, if you think about the early days where we had projects like Google Cardboard, for example, um, where, you know, you could take a phone and put it in kind of this, this little headset that Google made. Um, I, I, I would, I, I don't know if, I, I mean, I have, I don't know if there's going to be a return to that, but it does make sense because I agree, you know, even when you look at say what Facebook is doing with things like the Oculus Quest, you know, the untethered headsets, it, it still is a bit of a barrier, whether that's price or availability, whereas of course everybody has a phone. And I think I think when you look at solutions as well, like say we have a unity like Fury Use, where you can stream, um, you, you could stream a full VR experience. Well, not yet, but this is something we're working on, where you could stream a full VR experience to a phone. I, I think maybe once we get to that point where we show that things like that are, are viable, then absolutely I think I think the market will probably take a look at phones again as VR devices for sure. Great, awesome, thank you. Um, does anybody else have any other question? I'm just checking the chat real quickly. I don't see anything else. Andre, I like. I have I have a question, Ingra, uh, uh, for Seth. Uh, do you see any opportunities uh, around sports, uh, are like 
uh, we here in Brazil, we are we are very deep into soccer. So do you see any potential use of the technology uh, around either soccer or other uh, popular sports in, in Brazil or other uh, other where else in the world? Uh, absolutely. Um, you know, if, if you think about some of the experience that were done in film uh, that are now experiments that were done in film that are now uh, kind of mainstream, so volumetric capture, for example, um, I mean, Unity is a technology platform that could absolutely enable that sort of thing. You know, if, if we can figure out how to scale up the hardware to be able to say capture a full soccer match in 3D, um, that's absolutely something you could bring into Unity. So yeah, so imagine that now you're watching the game in in an experience powered by Unity, but you control the cameras, you know, you control the replay, you control even being able to be down on the field virtually. Um, this is absolutely something that I think is the future of sports and sporting events for sure. And not just sports, but I would say live events in general, you know, whether that's music, whether that's presentations, whether that's even education. Um, uh, yeah, I think I think there's absolutely a future for that. Right. I, I, I would like to share with you and please tell me if this makes sense or if it's like just a crazy idea. You know, in soccer, it's it's just a few years ago that the soccer rules allowed technology to be used by the referees to decide if 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 uh, some sort of gameplay was valid or not. So there's something that is called the video auxiliary referee, which is using technologies to define if if uh, 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 one play of the game was valid or not. So thinking about uh, potential use. Could we think about like build, building something like my VAR where where I could control on my iPhone or iPad going into the game and making my decision is if I am a, as a fan agree if that was not was a valid or not a valid play game is is that something that like have you seen something similar on football North American football or something like that? Uh, you know, I, I haven't seen it, but I, I'm not a sports fan. I, I only watch I only watch MMA and jujitsu, so I, I, I don't know. But I mean, it's it's certainly feasible. I mean, I don't. There's nothing. There's nothing technologically preventing that from happening. I think, like I said, once we get to the point where we can scale up the hardware to be able to capture those experiences in real time uh, and and stream them out to folks, which again, 5G is going to be a huge part of. Yeah, I mean, that level of interaction, I, I think, is again, is not just going to be possible. I think I think people are going to demand it. I think, you know, customers are going to and consumers are going to want that experience. So for sure. OK, so I have a proposal to Unity. Let's go sell this to to NFL so that on the next Super Bowl, Unity and Compasso are providing the technology for this virtual experience using Unity, Unity's platform. What do you think of that? Uh, there, we, we, without putting too fine a point on it, on anything, we, we, we may have some folks you could talk to for sure. Uh, good, 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 great. Okay, Seth, well, I think we are on the time here. Thank you so much. Uh, it was really a great pleasure. And I hope we can sell this together to NFL. Then we are we will be talking again. Okay. Absolutely, absolutely. Great, uh, Alexis. Can I make a last question? Oh, of course. Sorry, I thought <laughs> I thought we have ended up here. Under please. No, I, I just want to to um, talk with Seth if he uh, we we've seen many companies interested in this type of technology, but uh, many don't don't know where to start. Do you think that 2D experience are the gateway for those who have never uh, developed anything in this area or might consider using uh, something 3D like a VR or AR? Um, so do you mean like to, to learn how to create 3D content? Yeah, uh, if you think that uh, they need to start with 2D uh, experience or can just they just go through uh, 3D and virtual reality and sure. augmented reality. 
I, I think it kind of depends on what your focus is. Uh, if, you know, if you want to get into actual art content creation, like modeling and creating textures and animation, I think it's good to have a, a traditional background. So, you know, learning those 2D skill sets. But, you know, there are so many other skills around creating this content that really aren't, you know, if you think about, say, a technical artist or a technical designer, um, I think those folks, yeah, absolutely, just jump right into 3D. You know, I mean, Unity's Unity's free for most users, for example. I, you know, grab it and start playing with it. You know, start looking at software like uh, like Blender, you know, which is free 3D software. Uh, and there's so many great tutorials out there. I mean, Unity, you know, we've got Unity Learn. And then, of course, we have several partners who create just amazing YouTube content. Uh, yeah, I, I would say grab Unity and some of the other great software out there and just jump right in. Great, Seth, if that's okay with you, we just received a couple more questions. So would you have the time to maybe um, address two more or three sure. more? Sure. Yeah, okay, perfect. So Gabriel is asking, with the arrival of 5G, will cloud services be the future for Unity? How do you think this will interfere with the future of streaming? Um, I, I so I, I I can only speak in a limited capacity to kind of our business plan just because I don't I'm not a, a priest to all of them, but I I would hope so. I mean I think I think cloud um, opens up accessibility to a lot of folks. Um, so for example, if you look at what we're already doing with things like Unity Simulation, you know where now you don't have to have a giant server farm to run to run AI or, or machine learning, or um, you know and if, if we could maybe. Uh, expand that to things like rendering so for example if you're if you're working at a film house you know now you don't have to have a, a render farm you can just use unity's cloud or you don't have to have you know if you're a if you have content that you're trying to stream you know you don't have to host that on your own servers on your own metal you can just you can host that in unity's cloud um i think that'll be huge and, and again yeah with 5g that's just going to enable like we said people to deliver more content to deliver richer content and hopefully you know 5g is going to be more widespread so to to more users um, so I, I, I hope it's our future for sure, because it's, uh, if not, I think, I think we'll, we'll be, we'll, we'll be missing the boat in a pretty big way. Awesome. Great. Well, for our next question. Um, all right. So what are the first tips you can give to people who work with other development technologies that want to begin experiencing and working with Unity after this presentation as in, as in working with the Unity, the engine? Yeah, uh, go to unity3d.com, uh, grab grab the editor, uh, check out Unity Learn, where we have a lot of great free tutorial content. Um, and I think it also, like like I mentioned, I think it actually will link out to some of our YouTube partners as well. Um, yeah, you can get a pretty extensive free Unity education just between Unity Learn and, and YouTube. So that's that's my advice for sure. Perfect. And for our last question. Um, so in your opinion, in how many years we'll be able to see people, for example, using islands like those that we see in series like Black Mirror? Or do you think this will not be available for commercial use? I like this question. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I mean, as far as commercial adoption, hard to say, but I mean the technology, but just from a technological standpoint, you know, the technology I would say is either very close or it's it probably exists in, you know, like in, in an Intel lab somewhere or, or a lab at Apple somewhere. So um, I, I would, yeah, as far as commercial adoption, hard to say because, you know, I used to work in research and unfortunately a lot of the cool technology that comes out of research has a very hard time finding its way to, to productization. But um, as but but as far as feasibility, you know, it, it could, you know, if, if somebody finds out a, a way to make it accessible and, and a way to, you know, to, to really get it into the market, yeah, it could be, it could be very soon. It could be a couple of years, so. All right, thank you so much, Seth. I think this is it for questions uh, on our side. Once again, I just wanted to thank you on behalf of the Composite Wall team for being here today. Uh, once again, this has been very, very interesting and very informative. I would also like to thank everybody who has uh, stuck with us until the end. Uh, thank you so much, and I guess we'll see you guys in our next webinar. Alexis, would you have a few words? Yeah, just thank you, everyone. Thank you, Seth, for taking the time for this uh, very interesting conversation today. We hope we can do more and more business together. So. Uh, Thanks uh, to all the customers and all of our team that's also on the call here. So see you in the next one. Bye bye, guys. Bye bye.